Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's been a few months since my last video, but in today's video, I'd like to discuss how to apply boundary events to loop activities. Business software and system architects communicate through diagrams, while hands-on engineers communicate via code. On the screen is a snippet of some recent work we did with a customer, in which we developed an automated solution for their trading card inventory management system. The model was used to communicate with the software delivery teams in that to be design process. And so I thought this was a good example to share with you a modeling pattern for how to describe the application of boundary events to a script task with looping behavior. So let's dive in. If we look at the first task, we will have a script task called run card pool uh, with a looping behavior. standard loop there. Um, but then if we go down into the standard loop details, um, what we'll see is that we set the maximum loop attribute to five, meaning the maximum at execution uh, would be five times in that activity. But a key note is if we don't set the number, it will be unbounded uh, and it'll continue to loop. So I'm just gonna remove that for now, which is fine. Um, we cover looping activities in another video, so I'll leave a link in the description um, if you're interested in the specifics. But from a software delivery perspective, um, by unbounding the, the, the looping task uh, has implications. It has implications whether we set it to five or zero, um, meaning that you know every time that it loops, um, you know there's going to be resource costs like uh, computing. Cost or from running the script or from the pulling the data via APIs. But by applying an intermediate timer event to the boundary of the activity, we're able to interrupt that looping task at three minutes. Um, and essentially what that does is it creates um, an exception flow that leads to another activity in which we document the script results um, and, and, send a, a, and send an issue a notification. And the exception flow will help us in terms of avoiding buggy scripts or if there's issues with APIs um, when the software delivery teams go and try to develop the code. Basically, it's another way to avoid the infinite loop, whether we set that number or leave it unbounded. A key note is that uh, for each successful card pool, the process will continue in which we're able to populate the card data. So there you have it, a, a quick modeling pattern um, that I wanted to share with you. Um, thanks for watching.